Welcome to the Somme Vigil podcast series, which tells the story of the Battle of the Somme in the words of those who were there. I'm Simon Bendry, Director for UCL Institute of Education's First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours programme. This series was commissioned by the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport and developed in partnership with the First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours programme and Chrome Radio. It was first released to accompany the Somme 100 Vigil at Westminster Abbey, held through the night of the 30th of June and into the morning of the 1st of July 2016, to mark the centenary of the Battle of the Somme. In this podcast, we hear an account of the action at Gomacourt on the morning of the 1st July 1916. First of July, 1916. Dawn breaks over the Somme. At 6.25 a.m., the British bombardment intensifies. Lance Corporal Sidney Richards was born in West Bromwich in 1895. Before the war, he had worked as a glass silverer and a clerk. He joined the 137th Brigade Machine Gun Company and took part in the artillery bombardment before the men went over the top on the 1st of July. His account of the action at Gomacor that morning was published in the Trinity Church Parish magazine. At last, the final morn arose. We had an early breakfast, making teas in a very small dugout. Well, just a hole big enough for a few to squeeze in. And our rations were composed of hard biscuits, cheese and pickles. What a menu. But we enjoyed it because we were very hungry and we had a sandwich given to us for the next day. The sun rose majestically in all its glory, and one couldn't help to think how horrible it was that this war should have been on. That only had to be momentary, as our duty lay before us. I prayed earnestly for strength and guidance to do my duty, and to go forward and follow my officer wherever he went. The time arrived for the smoke bombs to be sent over, and it was like a dense fog, and we were firing the guns at full speed. We sent thousands of bullets to a certain point, And then we had to move to another part of the line after getting the water out of the barrel which was boiling. We then put in cold water to cool it and make it better for carrying. Up it goes on my shoulder, and no light weight, about 68 pounds, in addition to what I was wearing or carrying. Box respirator, smoke helmet, bombs, haversack, water bottle and ammunition attached to my equipment, spare parts wallet. They were whiz-banging the trench all the way, and I thought several times that I should have been killed. But my one thought was getting to this certain spot, and with the help of God, I reached it in safety. Perspiration was streaming down my face, and my oil sheet was quite wet. I had forgotten to mention I was carrying that, and also some sandbags. We were unable to get to the position, and the order came along to fire from our former positions, so... Up with the gun again, and back we went, passing wounded men on the way. Our officer was absolutely splendid, and kept so cool and collected all through. I could have done anything, and gone anywhere with him. We moved the gun again, and fired from the parapet. And didn't we just rip them over? We took some trenches, but the men were only able to hold them on the right. The sergeant and I were at the gun all day, and didn't leave it until midnight. And then... When we arrived at our dugout, it had been blown in by a huge shell. I thanked God with all my heart that we were out at the time. In 1917, Sidney Richards was recommended for a commission and sent to an officer cadet battalion at Purbright in Surrey. In May 1918, he returned to France as a second lieutenant, joining the 55th Battalion Machine Gun Corps. He died in 1950, aged 55. You have been listening to The Story of the Somme, a Chrome Radio production for the Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport, in partnership with UCL Institute of Education's First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours programme. The producer was Katrina Oliphant. In the next podcast, a member of the West Yorkshire Regiment writes a last letter home to his wife.